Hello, YouTube friends. It's been a long time since I've posted anything on my radio channel. Uh, I even contemplated just shutting my channel down. I don't have a lot of viewers, and, you know, I just don't have the time to make a lot of videos anymore. And additionally, I've never felt totally comfortable. I'm not an expert at radios at all. And, you know, these radio video channels are kind of a dime a dozen where people just, and, I, and I'm guilty of this myself, you, you know, you replace all the cap, cap capacitors, restuff them. You know, this is how you do this. This is how you do that basic stuff. When it comes down to actual troubleshooting and really understanding electronics, I'm not the best. I try, like everybody else, but yeah. I'm not Mr. Carlson, and I'm not X-Ray Tony B. By the way, if you've never heard of X-Ray Tony B, I don't know how much people watch him that are in the regular radio restoration community of tube radios, but he works usually on amplifiers and receivers from like the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, he is, I believe, an electric engineer. He's called X-Ray Tony because he owns his own company that services radio, uh, yeah, radiological equipment in hospitals. So he knows electronics. I'm pretty sure he went to college for it. He knows circuits. And, and I mean, if you want to watch somebody go through a circuit board and understand how, and, and more modern, he focuses on transistor stuff. He is fantastic. Anyway, X-Ray Tony B, one word, that's his channel. Um, okay, so what we have here, and I thought I would do a little series on this, is I just got this. It is a Motorola 56T1 transistor radio, battery operated. This is apparently, and I'm sure it's true, I haven't looked it up, I was told this by the seller, the first transistor radio that Motorola ever made, and it was made in the early 50s, and I don't have the year. Maybe I'll put it on the screen for you. Uh, you can see in the back I'm working on another radio, which I'm not doing a series on. That is my Kenwood uh, TS-130S that I just bought a couple months ago that I'm recapping. Um, it works. It was an early 8081 radio, but all the capacitors need to be replaced. All the, lots of electrolytics. I've already done that board. I'm working on others. The reason I'm not doing a video series on that is, again, my lack of expertise. I, I posted a whole series on my old um, TS520 Kenwood, and uh, I ended up blowing out the transmit line on it, and I, it's still not working. Not this one. This is a TS520 that works. It's another one that I had. I've considered taking this series down because it's kind of, I'm never going to finish it. I think I'm going to part it out. Anyway, this is a neat radio. It is in kind of rough shape. Now, the inside looks really good, pretty, pretty clean. It's got about three electrolytics that I counted. It's got Texas Instrument. Um, gosh, let me try to get that. There you go. You can see the Texas Instrument logo uh, transistors. And I think I counted five or six of them. Nine volt battery, of course. Basic AM radio. This, this, this is heavy too. This, this chassis is heavy. And, and th I thought this was kind of interesting. I, I don't know what this is, but. This radio is equipped with Motorola's exclusive Placer plated circuit chassis. Whatever that means. <laughs> I guess this metal's plated with something special. I don't know. I mean, the, the circuit board looks like a basic old circuit board, but uh, the speaker cone in there looks good. Everything looks good. Obvi this has never been powered up. I'm not powering it up yet. It is pretty worn. I've seen better ones. Um, it's, it's seen some life, which is actually good. I like the fact that it was used. Who knows, uh, you know, who owned it. Maybe some kid did. Maybe some housewife had it on her shelf in the kitchen. You know, I don't know. I love this logo here. And it's got the little, um, schematic thing for, a like a transistor Motorola logo. I took the knob off. So it's in, this knob is in real rough shape, but it's mostly, um, like a, like a, a fungus or something on there, plastic, and you can see the clean part. So the guy I bought it from wanted to see if that would clean up, and it I don't know what he used on it, but it, it will clean up. So that all that junk will come off, and it's, of course it's backed with some gold that I'll have to be careful not to scratch because the numbers are on that gold paint. 
and that just goes in with the set screw to the front. And this knob, you know, it's kind of nasty. The whole case is kind of dirt, is really dirty. Scratched up, I don't mind the scratches. I wouldn't try to restore it. I mean, that grill could be repainted, but I don't know if I will. I kind of like wear on old radios. It shows the life they've lived. I don't, I'm not one of these guys that likes to make a radio look new again. I'd rather just get one working and clean it and make it look as, as it, as it does, as it's lived its life. Who know who, who knows who owned it and what it went through. So I ordered the Sam's for this and I think I will do a little restoration video on this of, uh, of changing out the few caps and trying to do an alignment on it and, uh, see how that goes. And I'll be talking more to you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. This is Tom, K2BEW. I, oh, I changed the channel name. I had my ham radio name on there, but it always showed up in my email because it's linked to Gmail. So I just went back to using my full name and got rid of the ham radio law, uh, call sign. People would say, what is this name in your email? They, they didn't know what K2BEW was. So, all right.